The Kurukshetra edition this time focuses on water and sanitation, one of the major issues that we need to understand. Now, before we begin with that, there was a special article based on fishery development in India, and with that, we have the Matasya Sampada Yojana, which has been earmarked in nearly 21 states with an initial corpus fund of rupees 20,000 crores, mainly for infrastructure, market, and equipments. The idea is to double the exports of fish and increase the production by nearly 70 lakh tons in the next five years also we are being uh, focusing on clean ganga mission which would help increase the fish farming and a app associated to uh, the fishery development which is in the name of ecopal app has been developed now this was about the uh, fishery scheme besides that we are also focusing on open defecation free india where public participation capacity building and a kind of critical role of media has been earmarked as a very important aspect for development coming on on to the water and the related issues now over the years we have seen that piped water supply is lacking in most of the households so jal shakti abhiyan under which we are talking about hargar nal se jal uh, would be available to all the households in rural area rural india by 2024 also we are talking about namami gange which we would discuss in a while in detail which is a national mission for clean ganga ganga is important because you have 43 percent of the population that depends on ganga for its survival also in india we have witnessed nearly five percent of the diseases uh, the total burden of the disease is due to waterborne diseases of which diarrhea is one of the major causes so controlling and checking that unsafe water is another major issue so we have nearly 40 times higher issues related to unsafe water than china and 12 times higher values as compared to sri lanka also unplanned groundwater extraction is a big issue because you have uh, reduced waters in the well contamination due to arsenic poisoning heavy metals high fluoride content also we have atal bahujal bhujal yojana which talks about the groundwater management of groundwater with the help of local community it's a kind of centrally sponsored program uh, niti ayog is working with another interesting scheme which is the composite water management index and this provides an assessment for water management in the stressed areas in india so those are some of the important aspects water and sanitation is important because it has been mentioned under the list two of the seven schedule of the constitution and it's the responsibility of the state government to work around those now here are some of the schemes that we can see now the name of the scheme are important in some of your exams you could have a direct list Maharashtra you have the Jal Yukta Shivar Mukhi Mantri Jal Swabhiman Abhiyan is in Rajasthan and so on and so forth similarly we have uh, transplant of the saplings from nursery to the field under the Punjab Preservation of Subsoil Water Act. Similarly, in Maharashtra, groundwater development has been notified, uh, has been uh, focusing on drilling of deep wells in the notified as well as the non-notified areas. In Andhra Pradesh, you have water uh, resource information and management systems where piezometers are attached to the bore wells and the groundwater has been improved by nearly two meters. In Maharashtra, we are talking about water and entitlement transfer which is in the name of wet scheme and the wastewater reuse certificate WEC so two major schemes again in Maharashtra uh, internet of things has been used for metering uh, then you have artificial intelligence that has come into play sensors based on IOT have been incorporated in ma many of the locations now coming on to what can be actually done how can we strengthen this issue of water? So first of all, we need to make water as a part of economic development. The best, the benefit cost ratio should be greater than one. Then you have introduction of water markets at large scale. Now the Murray Darling Basin in Australia, the model of that can be replicated in many places. Pollution tax should be imposed, which includes a severe tax on water pollution. Uh, and this should be levied onto the industries there should be uh, this should be a part of the extended prouder responsibility also there should be strategies for public private partnership and water management mainly uh, the model based on the theme tide river uh, the next is the rejuvenation of ganga so we have four pro programs that are part of it 
निर्मल गंगा अविरल गंगा जन गंगा एंड ज्ञान गंगा सो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द सब कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ ईच ऑफ दोज द नमामि गंगे प्रोजेक्ट हैज बीन इंप्लीमेंटेड अंडर द नेशनल मिशन फॉर क्लीन गंगा यू हैव नियरली 315 प्रोजेक्ट्स व्हिच आर एसोसिएटेड टू इट एंड यू हैव सेवन आईआईटीज हु हैव बीन वर्किंग टुगेदर फॉर द गंगा रिवर बेसिन मैनेजमेंट प्लान नाउ निर्मल गंगा व्हिच टॉक्स अबाउट अनपॉल्यूटेड फ्लो फोकसेस ऑन सीवेज इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर फीकल स्लश डिस्पोजल इंडस्ट्रियल पोल्यूशन solid waste management talking about rural sanitation uh, quality of water and monitoring of water mainly the dissolved oxygen the biological oxygen demand level so that is all part of your nirmal ganga under the aviral ganga or the uninterrupted flow flow we talks up we talk about afforestation biodiversity ecological uh, flow conservation of gangetic dolphin and other uh, animals associated in the nearby areas sustainable agriculture and small river rejuvenation program जन गंगा इज अ मीन्स वेयर पीपल रिवर कनेक्ट प्रोग्राम्स हैव बीन एस्टैब्लिश सो यू हैव घाट एंड क्रिमेटोरिया जल भागीदारी और पीपल्स पार्टिसिपेशन गंगा क्वेस्ट विच इज़ अ ऑनलाइन नेशनल लेवल क्विज ऑन गंगा क्लीन गंगा फंड एंड देन ग्रेट गंगा रन मैराथन दैट हैज बीन ऑर्गेनाइज सिमिलरली वी हैव ज्ञान गंगा ज्ञान गंगा टॉक्स अबाउट लीडर मेपिंग मैपिंग देन यू हैव द सेंटर फॉर गंगा मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज बींग एस्टैब्लिश एट आई आई टी कानपुर सिमिलरली microbial diversity mapping has been done we have cultural mapping uh, the channels of the ganga have been mapped the new paradigms for planning new cities in the region has been laid down and earth ganga which talks about the economic developments related to ganga have been taken into consideration the next is when it comes to uh, the water mission we have the har ghar jal or the jal jal uh, jal shakti abhiyan which talk, which has been the main focus of the government for providing piped water supply to all the rural households by 2024 now this has led to establishment of ministry of jal shakti in 2019 in india we have nearly 60 crore people who face acute water crisis and 2 lakh people die every year due to unsafe water conditions with 4% of the uh, with 18% of the world population and 4% of the renewable water resources india's issue for water crisis is very very severe we have seen a nearly 6% gdp loss because of the water scarcity that has been seen and providing piped water supply has been one of the major area aims so far in rural areas it's only 11% in urban area it is 40% piped water supply that has been provided and moreover if we talk in uh, simple terms one in 11 household has water supply that is there also statistics reveal by 2020 uh, 2030 indian industries will use four times water than at present uh, so conservation of water becomes very very important saint tiruvallur who had rightly said if water starts disappearing the natural process goes into disruption and eventually the civilizations would come to end and this is the process that would lead to total destruction so emphasizing proper water supply Uh, efficient delivery of water proper quality in village infrastructure and creating a jal jeevan kosh becomes very very important the next important aspect that we would understand is the swachh bharat mission now we have the following developments that we have seen in 1954 we had rural sanitation program which was part of the first five year plan uh, in 81 census we had only 1% of the sanitation coverage so in 86 we came up with a scheme of central rural sanitation program where 80% assistance was given to bpl families for construction of toilets in 1999 you had a total sanitation campaign that is started in 2017 we talked about open defecation free uh, india so the total sanitation campaign combined with indra awas yojana in 2006 later on you had the nirmal gram puraskar and sampurna swachhata andolan that basically motivated the total sanitation campaign and in 2012 we came up with nirmal bharat abhiyan the aim was to increase sanitation availability and this focused on renewed strategy and saturation approach 100% access to toilets by 2022 and this was launched al- along with manrega scheme In 2014 we came up with Swachh Bharat Mission there were two versions for it the Gramin version for rural areas and the urban version now Gandhi ji believed that 
Cleanliness is the responsibility of oneself and that is the best way to remove untouchability from the society. So everyone is his own scavenger. That's what he popularly said. And his even the first Satyagraha focused on the concept of sanitation that started in South Africa. So sanitation and the issues related to sanitation are indeed very, very important. Coming on to the safe water supply. In 1999, we started with the Department of Drinking Water Supply under Ministry of Rural development 2010 this was renamed as department of not only drinking water but also sanitation included and 1991 we focused on drinking uh, water mission renamed as rajiv gandhi national drinking water mission and worldwide 21 percent of the diseases are due to waterborne infections all the communicable diseases of that 21 percent are due to waterborne diseases now the proportion of safe drinking water in rural areas is around 82 however it's 91 percent in urban area nearly 30 million people suffer from waterborne diseases and this has led to loss of 73 million working days uh, every year that we have seen also 66 percent of the solid waste that is there is being processed and 90 6% of the ward practices for door-to-door -door collection of solid waste has been taken into account. Uh, as per the re ratings recently, the rankings in the aspirational districts recently, uh, Bhupalpalli has been among the leading ones. The next important thing is health. Now under health, we have seen the present life expectancy is lower for males and higher for females, but still females have been uh, exposed to numerous issues of health because of lower education, lower awareness, less exposure and training. Uh, so in article 47, we aim to improve the nutritional status. Also, there is a kind of vicious cycle. An uh, undernourished woman would bear a child with low birth rate, uh, low birth weight and preterm babies and that uh, low term uh, low birth weight baby or a malnourished girl would turn into an adolescent and turning into a malnourished mother again so this is a kind of uh, interlinked cycle that has been laid down swastha nagrik abhiyan talks about the social movement for health now we have numerous schemes which talk about iron and folic acid supplement anemia mukt bharat nutrition days Talking about biannual deworming tablets being provided, intensified national iron plus initiative that has been taken plus, and then under the national health policy 2017 we have given priority to various uh, issues which include nirbhay nari then we have the goal of attaining life expectancy of 70 years by 2025 uh, mmr of 100 by 2020 we are also talking about 90s to 90s to 90 target for hiv that is 90 percent of all the people living with hiv should know their status of that 90 percent should receive anti retroviral therapy and of the 90% receiving the therapy must be able to attain uh, the viral suppression. So it's a kind of 90s to 90s to 90. And then we have series of schemes coming up for communicable and non-communicable diseases and various programs for maternal, child and adolescent healthcare, which talks about the Rashtriya Bal Swasthya Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Surakshit Matrat Vabhiyan and so on and so forth. Then you have the separate schemes for communicable and non-communicable diseases diseases non-communicable it's mainly uh, control for tobacco burn injuries cancer for communicable it's mainly tuberculosis victor bond diseases pulse polio rabies control so those are some of the major uh, factors that we have taken into uh, account and the last most important topic that we would be focusing is decentralized government now decentralized government started in 1215 uh, and this was by the democratic foundation and called as a magma carta of England so it started back in England and thereafter participatory development became a major theme. Now under this participatory development, decentralization was the theme. So there were three elements of decentralization that were focused. These elements was first of all was deconcentration. Now de deconcentration is the weakest form of decentralization where central government merely shifts the responsibility to the regions or the grassroots level. So it is the weakest form. The next is delegation. Delegation is transferring of responsibilities 
of the public function to semi autonomous bodies and the last one is devolution uh, devolution is the strongest form of decentralized governance that we say where central government basically functions uh, create is a authority making body for decisions finance and management of local units with a well defined structure that is there the next is uh, in india how this decentralization started so we have the balwant rai mehta committee which talked about three levels the village block and district later on dantwala committee started the block planning in 1978 under manrega scheme we talk about 100 days of minimum guaranteed employment with at least 50% of the total work to be taken care by gram panchayats through participatory planning approach also we have ajivika or the national rural livelihood mission in 2011 which aimed to cover 7 crore rural poor din dayal gramin kaushal yojana talked about skill development so the panchayati raj institution talks about the gram panchayat block and zilla gram panchayat is the lowest level consi consisting of a single village or the cluster of adjoining villages you have five constituencies under which it is divided and the body of the elected persons is known as gram panchayat next to gram panchayat you have the block panchayat block panchayat is also known as panchayat samiti and here you have a group of uh, villages coming together to form a block and this is where you have the block panchayat next to block you have the zila panchayat or the district panchayat which is each zila would have one zila parishad or what is known as the district panchayat so this is the structure of the decentralized government system in india now this structure of decentralized government we have already covered in our ncert's uh, political science class 6 to 12 so i definitely recommend you just go back and check out all the ncrts for social studies that we have covered very very important and many of those have direct bearing of the questions for your examination we would be covering yojana and kurukshetra on a monthly basis along with fortnightly editions of down to earth so stay tuned for many more updates from our side have a wonderful day ahead